say when we're beginning a season of racial reconciliation. <coughs> so we have special prayers and sermon and music about that. So a warm welcome to you all and a warm welcome to all the children who are here today and the youth. Thank you. Let us begin with the opening sentences. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, Heavenly Father, from every bond of prejudice and fear, that honoring the steadfast courage of your servant, Absalom Jones, we may show forth in our lives the reconciling love and true freedom of the children of God, which you have given us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as the first of importance, which I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was appeared to the Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and, he, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though I was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then I, it was I or they, so we proclaimed, and you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, They caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and they followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I'd like to invite any any young people we've got here to come forward. So all those who just sang in the Cherub Choir, please come forward. My middle schoolers I see there. Yeah, come on up. Anyone else? Have a seat. Have a seat right here. But face me, because we're going to, we're going to have a, have a little talk. All right, well, it is wonderful to see you all this morning and all of your parents and relatives. I have a question for those of you sitting down here with me. Do you have a favorite Bible story? No. Any of the miracles of Jesus that really catch your interest? No. What about the, what about the parents? Just shout some stories out. What are some of your favorite moments in the Bible? Mustard seed. If you have faith like a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Daniel in the lion's den. There's a whole story about someone who has to face off lions, but he prays and the lions don't, don't hurt him. Anyone else? Well, I'll tell you one of my favorite moments of the Bible. It comes right at the very beginning. It's in the very first chapter when God is making everything and declaring that it is good. God makes humans. He makes people like me and like you. And he says that we are made in God's image. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. So even though we all look different, because I don't look like you, do I? 
No. And do you look like me? No. no. And do you, I mean, you kind of look like your parents, but do you really look like your parents? No, we all look different. And yet, each and every one of us is made in the image of God. And I think that's pretty exciting that we get to know a little bit of what it means to know God by knowing and loving one another. And we can only do that when we know and love as many people as possible, and especially as many people who are different from us as possible, because then we know just how big and amazing and different God is from us. So right now in the Episcopal Church in Connecticut, this is an Episcopal Church, I know that's a big word, but all our churches here in Connecticut are going to spend the next couple of years thinking about what it means to really embrace and really celebrate those differences between people. Because sometimes in the past, we've looked at people who are different from us and said, you know what, I don't like those people very much just because they look different. And that means that I'm not going to treat them as well as I treat the people who look like me. And do you think that's right? No. No, that's a good answer. It's a good answer. And part of that is because all of us are made in the image of God, especially the people who look different from us. And so, over the next couple of years, we're going to be thinking about what does it mean to really love people who look and maybe sound different than us, who speak a different language maybe, who may be born in a different country but choose to come and live here because we haven't always treated those people as well as we could and as well as God wants us to. And like that story we heard earlier that Deacon Diane read for us about people fishing and catching so many fish that they they couldn't keep them all in their boats. God's love is so wide that it catches all different kinds of fish, all different kinds of people, and they all fall inside God's love. And so we have to do that too. And so here at church and in churches across Connecticut, we're going to be thinking about how can we love our neighbor even more fully than we have been up to this point, because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to love one another. So do you think you can help us with that? Do you think you can love people even if they look and speak differently from you? I want a big yes. 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 Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to close us off with a prayer that will um, help us think about this a little more. So let us pray. And this is for all the adults too. Oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. You can read your... Oh. Substituting for 
my daughter Annabelle, who's ill, unfortunately. The prayers of the people. Please stand. The responses shine in our hearts. You who framed the brightness of the first light in creation, dispel the arrogance and anger that shudder the unity of your holy church. Fill your faithful people with the radiant light of truth. Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts. You who delivered your people from bondage and slavery to the land of promise, set us free from enslavement to distrust and the divisions of race, class, gender, and ethnicity to be recreated into one common humanity. Christ be our light. Shine in our hearts. You who are at the comfort and hope to the lost and least, be the light of compassion to the sick, sorrowful, suffering, especially Jane, Sarah, Jack Andros, Jane Shiowitz, Anna Prejner, Paul Parfit, Larry W., Claudia Green, Fanny, Suzanne, Sandy and Bruce, Olga, Janet, Dorothy, Jan, Jude Ree, Kemper Rice, Claudia, Sean Sullivan, Lori Bovaro, and anyone we now name silently or aloud. Dave Ross. Help us to be your compassion in the world. Christ, be our light. You who welcome into brilliant light of eternity those who have died lovingly and fold those whose lives are cut short by violence, warfare, and strife. We pray for Lucas Doring Shea, departed. Christ be our light. You who delight in the complexity and splendor of creation, help us delight in the diversity of this earth, our island home. Inspire your people to care for all you have made. Christ be our light. Yeah. 
God's people and, and reconcile with one another in our society across all boundaries that keep us separated and divided. So, you know, please, let's talk about it. Maybe we'll form a, a group or a, ga a gathering, special gatherings across this next year to talk about our own uh, issues around racism. Our, maybe in our whiteness, but maybe in a white parish. So just something to, to name and to pray about and to hope for change in positive ways. Um, I think God would like to say a word. Sure. Good morning. Evening, um, we are going to have an informational and you know first planning meeting for our annual mission trip to the Rosebud Reservation in South Dakota. That trip's open to anyone ages 14 and up. Um, so if you know someone who's 13 now but will be 14 by the end of June, they'd be welcome to join us. Um, so if you're interested in coming on that trip or learning about how you can support the people who are going on that trip. We'd love to see you tonight at 6.30, just in the parish library, immediately after the twilight at Trinity service. And it's an opportunity to further this conversation about um, racial justice in this country as we work with the, the members of the Rosebud uh, Reservation, uh, the Lakota people uh, on the Rosebud Reservation. Um, and a huge thank you to Kim and Tommy Craig, who opened their home to our youth groups this last weekend for our annual ski trip. We had 14 middle and high schoolers up at Okemo for a couple of days enjoying the beautiful weather on the slopes. So a huge thank you to that. One last message. Um, in the last couple of weeks, the middle school youth group, Sunday school uh, as well, had prepared uh, over 150 Valentines to be delivered to residents of Carrollton and Sturgis Ridge. And we got some to Carrollton last week. We were hoping to go to Sturgis Ridge today, but uh, there's a lot of um, bugs being passed around there at the moment, so they asked us not to come, but be assured that uh, the love of all the children here at Trinity will be passed on to them in the near future. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, I asked Diane Peterson, our deacon, if she would share uh, just something about her beautiful stole that she's wearing. So, the deacon wears her stole across the left shoulder, and a priest wears his stole around both shoulders. Just something to notice. Uh, so, deacon Diane. Uh, good morning. This is another gift my family from Sierra Leone brought me in October. Uh, I wore one last Sunday. This is yet another one, um, but this was made in Ghana. Um, it is actually mud cloth, which is made from fermented mud, so if you can figure that out, uh, please let me know. But, uh, but symbols have a meaning, and this one, it has little... V's pointing downward, and that means mortality. It also has beads on it with lines and dots, and that means wisdom and education. So this was a gift that they gave to me, which is very meaningful because as I said last week, we changed, uh, we, ch we found our, through history, our ancestry is from Sierra Leone. So we did a lot of work. We know they came from there to here. And so this is a gift to me. And I have one more, which I may wear next Sunday. So I just wanted to explain that to you. Thank you. And now our director of music, Robert, would like to offer a word. Welcome this morning to our guest musician, Cedar Rose Newman. Uh, she, you can read more about her uh, at, the, at the bottom of your announcement sheet. Uh, she participates with the Music for Youth program at the Pequot Library and has a performance coming up on, uh, on February 22nd, Friday night in the Marcus Cafe. She will be performing actually along with the 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 cars we had last week. Uh, so that, that performance is next Friday at 5 o'clock. Uh, please extend to her your we're welcome and thanks at Copy Hour. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I wonder if Harry would just stand for one second. Harry Schmidt is um, offering a movie series on Saturday nights, February 16th, and a couple of others. So this Saturday, it's Babette's Feast, so come and enjoy the movies. And also, <coughs> Thomas is offering other dates, uh, so it's a fun thing on Saturday night if you'd like to come out and enjoy fellowship. And just to let you know, the outreach uh, project for collecting change is going to start on a couple of Sundays, this 24. So start collecting your change, we know it will go towards all our great. Uh, outreach missions. Um, 
there's lots of other things here to check it out, but mainly this week we've got a well season luncheon. If you'd like to come, please contact Michael Bennett at his phone or email. Um, and there's a vestry orientation at noon and a coffee hour right after this service, so everyone's welcome to come and enjoy fellowship. It doesn't seem to be working very well. Um, please, please come and greet one another and share the love of Christ that we have in this special place. Anybody else have an announcement? It's so great to see all these young children here today and have our teenagers and Amy together. Has he wanted to be? We all come together and have a little quick birthday acknowledgement for all of you. Oh, yes. thank you. Uh, today is a, is a very special birthday weekend for two of our um, wonderful parishioners, um, Jan Perry and Ernestine Sergo. I don't see uh, Ernestine is, uh, just had her birthday last night, and tonight, today is Jan's birthday. We'd like to sing special happy birthday to her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
our life, which comes from you. By your power, you sustain the universe. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves. But we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. <laughs> Oh. 
of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and rose again, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.